Hi, my name is Mike Aben, and welcome to episode 17 of my KSB campaign. And I'm out here with Muna One, now out in space for over 25 days, still looking for that moon encounter. And in fact, you'll see the moon blast by here very, very shortly. But the, the main thing I'm doing actually is simply time warping to the completion of my next rocket, ComSat 3. And ComSat 3 will be the third of four communication satellites that will, uh, that will allow me to communicate with all my vessels in around the Kerbin sphere of influence. Now, with only two communication satellites in orbit, uh, coverage is pretty spotty, to say the least. So I need to make sure that uh, when ComSat 3 launches here, that it'll have a good connection all the way through the essential things it has to do. So I'm just time warping to the point where ComSat 2 is in a good position. And here we are. We're getting pretty close to it now. Yeah, I'd say that should do it. And then we are ready for launch. <laughs> Lift off. On a nice sunrise launch, which is really showing off, I think, these uh, the new environmental effects that came in with the latest update of Kerbal Space Program. The, the flame effects off these boosters look really, really good. I do want you, though, to keep an eye on these boosters when I go to separate them. But, uh, I don't know. I, I, the, the aerodynamics has a little bit of fun with them. But, I'm looking pretty good shooting up to the sky. Right, coming up to booster separation. Oh, they just about missed each other. It's like those old sort of Keystone Cop silent comedies where you see cars going through intersections, but they just narrowly miss each other. Anyway, I, I do like these environmental effects. Now that we are just going supersonic, you can see them starting to kick in on the rocket. They look really, really good here. You know, if I, I just wish that they would uh, dial down when they turn into heating effects, though. You know, to be honest, maybe, maybe they're not expecting people to do as shallow a sense as what I tend to do, but I'm sorry, I, 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 you know, unless somebody can convince me that I'm doing something wrong, uh, you know, I, I'm going to continue to assume that I am doing it right because I am getting myself up into orbit with, I think, relatively efficiently. Got a notification up there. Stages recovered. Got oh, about 98% of the cost back on those boosters. Nice. I am going to continue to try to recover as much as I can, trying to reduce the costs of these launches. The ascent, of course, is automated. The actual ascent profile being handled by um, a KOS script that I wrote, which just ended now that my apoapsis has reached 80 kilometers. And the staging is being handled by various smart parts that I've got installed in here. In fact, boom, there went that one. You can see the little red light from the smart, smart part. That smart part just staged those fairings. We'll activate the communitron to make sure that I maintain my communication link with Kerbal Space Center. That communitron will reach out to ComSat 2 that is in orbit well above this vessel. The other thing I want to make sure to do is to arm the parachutes. I've been having parachute woes, getting used to real chutes, and not to, you know, uh, deploy the parachute, but arm the parachutes. Um, and that's what you get with these real chute parachutes. And you can see I actually have a bit of a redesign with the ComSat. I, instead of going with the homegrown rockets uh, static solar panels that deploy, deployable static solar panels, I've gone with the stock Oxat panels, which actually I much prefer. I just haven't been putting them on because I've been limited with part count. But now that I have an upgraded vehicle assembly building, um, part count isn't really an issue anymore. And the small Oxats, each of those Oxats are one tenth the mass of the deployable solar panels that you've been seeing me use lately. And they generate more than one tenth the solar electricity. So you're actually, 
better off just covering the uh, you know the 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 probe with oxats like I did here, and not only that, I then don't have issues with um, there will always be solar panels that will be in the sun, provided that the probe itself is not on the dark side of the planet, of course. Now, the one thing I did run into, you know, this thing has a lot of fuel on it, by the way, I will say, because um, it was designed before I realized that it was two to 300 meters per second cheaper now with the latest update with Kerbal Space Center. So this thing has fuel up the wazoo. And that's a good thing because I'm having yaw issues here. If you look over at the at the uh, controls over at the bottom left there, you can see that yaw and pitch are over as hard as they can be, yet the ship wants to drift this way. I have absolutely no idea why it's doing that. Really none. I mean, everything is pretty much symmetrical. The only parts that are not symmetrical are the physics-less parts, like the, the you know, the, uh, the, the little smart parts and things like that. That can't be causing this. So I, I really, I, I, I'm clueless as to what's going on here. I don't know why, but uh, it's obviously affecting the efficiency of this particular ascent. I decided just to throttle up, just to push my apoapsis ahead of me, um, and that'll give me time to bring this thing back. Again, I always like to keep the apoapsis ahead of me as I do my circularization. Um, the reason for that, I don't know, seems to be pretty obvious. Once you're past the apoapsis, you're starting to go down. You don't want that to happen. So I pushed the apple, I gave a burst of speed to push my apoapsis ahead of me. Uh, apoapsis in about 15 seconds. So I'm trying to get myself back towards there. I'll start thrusting up anyway. Again, lots of fuel. Efficiency is not a big deal. Um, so it's not a huge deal, but it is kind of annoying. I just don't quite understand why this is happening. All right, getting re ready for that first stage separation. I don't like that camera jump that just happened there. Uh, that happens because I'm in chase view, which I really, really like. Um, I'll just use a uh, fuel balancer to steal the remaining fuel, what I can, out of that uh, first stage, and we'll ditch it. Again, I like to ditch it when my periapsis gets around 50 kilometers. Uh, I was explaining that in the last video. This will allow me to deorbit this thing at my leisure later on and try to get it to land relatively close to the Kerbal Space Center for a high recovery cost. And this thing still has 1,400 meters per second left. I mean, it, I think it's just under 800 meters per second to do the home and transfer to the orbit that I want. So yeah, uh, fuel reserves up the wazoo. And here we are just finishing off our orbital insertion. And then once we have that finished off, a few more puffs just to get our eccentricity down as low as we can and then what we do is we turn the probe normal or anti-normal doesn't matter which way but I don't know I know there's no up in space but I like it to be up <laughs> and then once it's oriented this way there will always be solar panels that will be in the light regardless of which way the uh, probe is oriented so it's not going to have the same sort of issues as you see me with other ones having to constantly reorient the probes to make sure the solar panels are going now what I've done is just turned on the rendezvous computer that comes with uh, KOS. And what I'm looking at is I've got ComSat 2 selected as a target. And the main thing I am looking at is the intercept angle. I want that intercept angle to be 90 or 270 degrees. Those are the two intercept angles I'm looking for. And that's when I'm going to do my transfer. The intercept angle tells you when to do um, your transfer burns to rendezvous with a particular target. When the intercept angle gets down to zero, that means it's time to, uh, rendezvous. that's the time to do your burn to do your rendezvous. But I don't want to rendezvous with it. I want to be 90 degrees away from it. So either 90 degrees ahead of it or 90 degrees behind it. Being 90 degrees ahead of it corresponds to a phase angle of 270 degrees or the intercept angle, which tells you when to burn, uh, is going to be 270. So 270 or 90 works either way. And I'm going with ComSat 2 because that's the one that's actually in its proper orbit. ComSat 1, recall, ran out of fuel so that it is not in the orbit that I eventually want it to be in. And so we are almost there to an intercept angle of 90 degrees. It's going to let it get nice and let it get really close to it. And there we go. Boom. OK, 
okay, ah, full throttle. And what I want to do is I want to get my apoapsis up to 1,000, eventually 1,067.5 kilometers, though I don't need to get it exactly to that. So I'm watching my apoapsis, waiting for it to get up to the appropriate altitude. we go we're getting close so we'll cut throttle and burn a little bit more slowly there we go that's 150 seeing little puffs now 155 60 166 166.9 167.4 wow that's that's definitely close enough and again turn the uh, craft towards the normal vector and then I don't have to worry about orienting solar panels. Yes, I do like these static oxats. They're, per they're perfectly fine. They don't look maybe as fancy as uh, those deployable ones that come from homegrown rockets that you've seen on my probe so far. But as far as practicality goes, they're fine. So we will watch this thing raising up and you can see ComSat 2 is over there towards the top right. And you can watch those communication links pop in and out. So it's going to work out really well. In fact, where Apoapsis is, is going to be very close to being right above the Kerbal Space Center by the time I get out there. So um, I'm going to have a direct link with Mission Control. So that's going to be great. And you can also be taking a look at my phase angle. Phase angle measures the actual angle you are away from something. And I want that to be 90 degrees and you can see that it's closing in on 90 degrees so this thing is looking like it's going to end up pretty much where i want it to be there we are oh what a pretty view nice full kerbin now you could do this without uh using kerbal engineer if you wanted to if you wanted to you could use maneuver nodes instead though i've yet to unlock maneuver nodes, so that's not really an option for me. But what you can do is when you're in low orbit, you can set up a maneuver that gets your apoapsis out towards, you know, the height that you want. In my case, that would be 1,067.5 kilometers. And then what you can do is you can take a look at how long it's going to take you to get out there. You can just hover over the, um, the apoapsis and periapsis icons to see how long it would take you to get out to those places. And then from that, you can figure out well, in this case, it takes a little over half an hour. It takes about 35 minutes. And so in 35 minutes, I'm, you know, I'm shooting for an orbit that's two hours. You know, ComSat 2 is in an orbit that's two hours. So in 34, 35 minutes, it's going to do a little bit more than 90 degrees or a quarter rotation around the planet. So then you can just kind of eyeball it and think, okay, I'm aiming for here with my apoapsis, but I know that ComSat 2 will move a quarter of a rotation or a little more than that. And then you can eyeball it using just maneuver nodes. And it actually works pretty well that way too. Now I'm going for an orbital period of two hours and I ended up overshooting it just a little bit. Uh, I like to get it down to uh, exactly two hours to the nearest tenth of a second so I'm turning myself retrograde and fixing that up just a little bit but while we're doing that I also wanted to point out uh, my inclination there of 4.08 degrees that's terrible I think that just sucks I, I can't live with that it's, it's gonna work fine with with that inclination but actually no it isn't the inclination has to be below one degree for the contract so I do have to fix it so what I'm going to do is if we take over there to Kerbal Engineer you can see that I have time to the equatorial ascending node and time to the equatorial descending node. So I'm just going to time warp to the nearest one, and then I'm going to fix my inclination. Now, a way you can get these equatorial ascending and descending nodes without having Kerbal Engineer, by the way, is to simply target the moon. The moon has an orbit that's an inclination of zero, so it's exactly in line with Kerbin's equator. And so what you can do is you can target the moon and then and then if you have maneuver nodes unlocked it will give you the ascending and descending nodes with your target orbit which is the same as the equator of Kerbin. So you can get the uh, equatorial ascending and descending nodes of Kerbin that way too if you don't have Kerbal Engineer. Now I just have to say that time warping with the chase camera on that's just beautiful. I love that. But anyway you can see here I'm just a couple of minutes away from the 
uh, equatorial ascending node. And since it's an ascending node, that means that the orbit is on its way north or up on this screen as we pass by that particular point. So in order to correct it and get my inclination to come down, I need to point south or down. <laughs> so I'm turning the vessel towards the anti-normal and uh, just going to time warp so that I'm really close to it. And then it's just simply a question of burning until uh, my inclination is down as low as I want it to be. And speaking personally, I like to get it down really, really, really low. And in fact, I'll probably revisit this in the future and uh, bring it down even lower than this. But uh, in the meantime, it's under the one degree that the contract requires, so that's it. Now, unfortunately, in the process of burning uh, anti-normal, I ended up raising my orbital period up by a little over a minute, but uh, that was an easy thing to fix. All I had to do was turn myself retrograde and a few puffs in the, in the uh, retrograde direction fixed that right up. And that's it. This satellite is now pretty much where I want it to be. So all I got to do is rinse and repeat, do the same thing with ComSat 4. Also, I got to somehow fix ComSat 1, which is a little bit messed up, but that will be for another time. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time with ComSat 4 because it is pretty much the identical process as what you just saw here. So I thought in the meantime, while I'm going to time warp towards ComSat 4, I'll talk about a mod that I is going to be an indispensable mod as this campaign continues on, and that's going to be Alarm Clock. Now, Alarm Clock has been working in conjunction with Kerbal Construction Time to generate the alarms that come up when vessels are completed and that kind of stuff. But what I want to show you here is how versatile this will be. Now, this will be an essential mod once I start uh, having more than one mission going along at the same time, and those missions are getting longer. But what I'm going to show you here is how to put in when planetary uh, launch windows are ready. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say my planet of origin's Kerbin, and then I'm going to go my target planet being Moho, and then you can pick either using a mathemat um, a mathemat like a formula or a simulation, a model. And what I do is I always pick the one that is the shortest one, figuring I can always, um, you know, if it's too early, that's fine. I can wait a little bit longer. But if it's too late, it's too late. So there you go. So I'm going to go and do this for each of the various planets that are in the Kerbal uh, solar system. So we got Eve coming up next. So I'll pick that one. Uh, there we go, E, 413 days with the model, 415 days with the formula, 413, we'll hit that off, that's a long way off. And we can set up uh, when these launch windows are coming up so that I can start to plan ahead of them. Because remember, with Kerbal Construction Time, i got to think ahead for missions. So if I know that these transfer windows are available to get to different planets, I need to know that they're coming up ahead of time. Now, that one that's coming up in 15 days for MOHO, not a chance I'm going to be ready for that. Actually, the really big limiting factor is not just my rockets, but actually the antennas. I don't have an antenna that can reach really outside of the Kerbin system that is out past Minmus. So I'm going to have to unlock better antennas. But I like to get these things out well in advance so that I can start to plan these bigger missions. And you will undoubtedly be seeing a lot more of Kerbal Alarm Clock in the future as my missions become longer and more complex but for now I got this wonderful surprise a couple of days later at the Kerbal Space Center uh, this contract is complete to uh, point dish antennas at the moon and to Minmus for two days of continual communication that's fantastic that means that that network actually stayed for two days <laughs> without any breaks even though it's only partially completed so that's that's great that that worked so that got me to free uh, another contract to uh, a contract slot to fill up and Carol Kerman Carol Kerman well another Kerbal I am coming to get you well sometime but for now I gotta get to ComSat 4 I gotta get that up there ComSat 4 went up using the exact same process you saw before getting it into low Kerbin orbit using the uh, intercept angle that is in Kerbal Engineer to decide when is going to be the appropriate place to perform my transfer. Get up there, circularize, uh, get the inclination down to zero. Everything went great, but this contract did not go green. And this contract didn't go green, this remote tech contract that I have, because you can see here there's still a gap. And the gap is because of 
that CompSat-1, which is not in the right orbit. I need to have another communication satellite in this gap that you can see between CompSat-3 and CompSat-4. I had hoped by this point that it was going to be CompSat-1 because I had hoped by this point I, will have, I would have unlocked uh, the Kerbal Attachment System fuel pipes that you can use during EVAs to connect ships together and transfer resources around. I have not unlocked that and looking at the tree it's going to be a long time till I or at least a little while still until I do unlock it so I'm not going to wait. Comsat 5 into the building queue you go you're going to go up there fill that gap between Comsat 3 and Comsat 4 but that's going to have to be for a future episode. Uh, thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.